we're going to be making a wind system, a wind machine in this one. It's a procedural auto, audio effect, really, just to kind of add that extra layer of ambience. But why would we make this as a procedural audio effect and not just use a sample? Well, you know, the main reason here is because the wind system can be linked up to uh, parameters uh, in gameplay that might make it useful for really supporting the narrative or, you know, the action that's happening in game. For example, as the, as the character moves faster, we, wanna, we might want the wind intensity to increase or, you know, in different environments, we want to have something that's really dynamic and moving about. And in that case, it might be more advantageous to have a procedural audio effect rather than a long sample that may also take a lot of space and memory for just something that's one layer. So let's just have a quick listen and check this out. So you can hear there's a few layers here actually. We have this whistling up above. There's a bit of a low frequency rumbling thing happening that's sort of simulating, you know, the, the overloading of a microphone if you were to be recording it. And then there's sort of this mid-range, you know, just like general like noise stuff that's uh, sort of the breeze or that, that just that background sound you hear. So let's look at how I did this. You know, this is, um, for, I mean, first of all, it's like I use a, a few different references to check what the sound of the wind would be and then, and then first prototyped it in Ableton. Uh, I mean, you could do this in any software. Really, I should have, I could have done this in um, Reaper or anything else. Uh, but let's just listen to the references. This one's a bit more mid-range heavy. That one really showcases the overloading of the, uh, the wind. Here's that whistling. And that's just that general kind of park sound. And then so when I prototyped it, the one kind of last piece besides the, the different layers is I also added this, uh, this delay um, just to, you know, decorrelate the left and right channels a little bit. And this is just to give that sort of stereo feeling you get when you're listening to uh, these sort of Foley um, style wind recordings. And the, the reason I did that is just to add, you know, to try to make it feel like right in between something recorded as um, compared to being something, you know, just tro sorry, too, um, just too mono and not really you know, representative of the recordings we might be used to hearing. So uh, just to look at this, I'm not going to build the whole thing in front of us for this tutorial. I'm really just going to have a look at the design. If you're interested in downloading the project, you can, I'll leave a link below for you to download it. Uh, I'll probably turn it into a plugin as well, because that's maybe more useful. But let's just look really quick. So we have four layers. Um, there, these are all uh, noise. We're using pink noise. I didn't really think about it too much, to be honest. Uh, but in this case, I've used pink noise. Uh, so there's sort of each each of these layers. So this is that whistling layer. You know, we had heard that whistling sound. Um, and the key to that that layer here is that we have some. Um, we used I used a bandpass filter, and uh, with sort of a narrow bandwidth. And the idea is that that th this is sort of the key to that movement here. This is a sort of sample and well, you know. Right, I'm, I'm triggering some random values, and it's slowly this interpret interp two will slowly move from one value to the next to ch to change that that uh, cutoff frequency in the filter, which is really creating that the whistling sound. So to do this, uh, this builds off of one of the past tutorials that we looked at uh, to create a clock generator. So in this case, the on play is using a trigger repeat to continuously trigger. Um, um, create triggers and uh, give us a new float value constantly. So it's it's constantly giving a new value to, to go to in the cutoff frequency. I've also just added a little uh, control here for that maximum cutoff frequency to, to, if you really want the whistling to go up in the higher frequencies and make it a little bit more intense. Uh, this next one down here, let's look at the next layer, would be the sort of low end that I was dis discussing. This is simulating that, that overloading of the microphone that sound. Um, so I've got this uh, same technique. I'm using exactly the same where we're generating a random value and we're slowly moving to that value. Uh, in this case, uh, it's also to control a filter, but in this case, a low pass filter. I'm really jamming it into uh, um, a limiter to get that overblown sound. You can see the input gain is quite high at nine. Uh, and I'm also using a wave shaper 
just to uh, sort of get some distortion out of it. I didn't really play with this too much. I could probably have done a better job, but hey. Um, on the, the other automation that's happening is just through the volume. It's just uh, using that same sort of random value to go to different volumes so that we get kind of a random sort of effect happening. Finally, uh, we're shaping that. We've already looked at that. So the idea is to uh, send it through the low pass to make it uh, really low end, get some distortion on it, and then really bust it into the, the, the limiter to, to really feel like it's overloaded. Uh, so the next layer, let's see, we have this high end. We're going to go through these and listen to them at, um, very shortly here. This one's just really, it's just a high pass filter. And that's going into the mixer. Finally, the last, this is like our park sound, the ambience um, that I, I mentioned before. And this is also just very simple. There's no modulation. It's just sort of uh, carving out some middle frequencies there. Uh, high pass filter at 330 and then a um, two pool low pass. I've just chained them together to make the two pool low pass at 3000 uh, hertz. So these are going to the mixer. I've got some controls to set the different, the different um, values in the mixer. And finally, there's some post-processing. Really, I just have a limiter here just to protect, just in case the, the wind system overloads uh, 0 dB. And uh, this delay, as I discussed before, this is just, just, this is just to co decorrelate the signal and give it a bit more of that stereo sound. So let's, let's have a quick look here. Uh, if I play it, let's hear we can have some, add some whistling. I can make that really crazy, actually. Maybe not really crazy. I set some limits here. But some higher frequency whistling here. And we can have, you know, more of this high end. It's just subtly in the background. And that's sort of that park sound that I was talking about. So it's a bit whistly for me, and that's not really the the vibe. I'm going to turn that down and just bring the whistling down a bit. So really I would be checking this against, you know, against these other samples back and forth to, to really carve out the exact tone that I want for the game as well. You know, choose, choose a sample. Um, yeah. And just, and just reference that a lot. But in the meantime, that's cool. That's great. Uh, that's the design. Um, let's just look at it in the game again. And if we play it here. So it's the same technique to be playing the sound in the game. We've seen it before. I've shown in past videos. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out my past videos, but I've just made a blueprint and added the meta sound as a um, audio component. And I also, in this case, I took off the spatialization because that's not really the effect that I want. I, I already sort of made my own spatialization with that decorrelation. I just want this general feeling of the player sort of listening to wind as they're moving through the world. So the idea here too, you know, as, as different things happened or maybe as they run fast, we could in increase that frequency of the or of the whistling or, you know, or as they change environments, have, have um, snap to a new set of values to create a, a new sort of... Uh, ambience for the wind but for now it's not so bad i think we can live with this so that's how to make a wind system in unreal engine 5's metasound hope you enjoyed that